Hello and welcome back everyone. Today's video will be my last video for the year because I will be on vacation soon and I will be enjoying some quality time in the sun without a computer. So, but for this video or for the last video, I will be concentrating on primvars. Primvars um, is a fancy name for primitive variables, which is um, which is which enables you to add certain attribute values into your shader stream and for for render man it's called primitive variable where you have color float float two three and all the same stuff you have in on as well user data color user data float and lots more and it it helps you to randomize shader values on the on a per show a per shape basis for instance, if you want to randomize colors or if you want to change roughness or bumble displacement values, this can all be done using primvars or user data. So heading over to Maya, um, I have my soldiers again, which you can get from the M2A learning scenes. And what I want to do um, is to create random or um, color shifts or hue shifts on the soldiers. and if you don't know the trick, what you had to do before is create a shader for the, this one guy, do your um, color randomizations, then create a new shader, assign it to him, to him, to him. And so you would end up with lots of shaders, which is not very efficient or it's not a really good habit to have lots of shaders. So in a production environment, you try to get create as many uh, as less shaders as possible. So you would create one shader and assign it to all the soldiers and then use primvars to control the colors or the roughness values or whatever you want to do, you need to do on um, in the shader. So first, let's see what we have of the, of the current render. So if I render the scene now, uh, we should get just the soldiers rendering white, which is all right because I didn't do anything. It's just a default shader assigned to this. It works with the AI standard or any other shader which is being rendered with Arnold. So to do this, you need to create a attribute per object. An attribute is an um, attribute you add here onto the shape node. So in my geo group, I've got these soldiers and make sure shapes are enabled. And if you click plus, you can select the shape nodes for each. You can also just select the top group and press the down key to select all the shapes at once. So, and I want to add an attribute per shape. So the first thing I want to do is control the diffuse strength. And to do so, I will head over to the script editor, create a new tab, and I will import the Python libraries. Import um, pyml.core as pmc, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. And then I want to store my selected array, my selected soldiers into an array called soldiers. Soldiers is equal to and pmc.selected and run this. If I run this selected and control enter, they get stored into soldiers, as you can see in the output here. And then I want to create a full loop for soldier in soldiers. Print soldier. So this is now an array and it's I'm going over each index and printing what's what is at that certain index. So what I want to do now is add this attribute to the soldier. So first I need to select the shape. So I can say soldier.select and then I want to do pmc.add adder and the attribute type is a float like so and the long name which is important to have, is now also very important to, for this to work. It needs to start with M2A underscore constant underscore, and then whatever you want to call this, the attribute. So I'll just call it diffuse strength, strength, like so. And then I'll select this and control enter. So there is a syntax exactly here. It should be a comma, not a colon. And running this. So if I select the soldier now and scroll down in the extra attributes of the shape, you can see that they have a constant of diffuse strength zero, all of them. So the diffuse strength is the name which goes into the AI user data float, um, which we haven't created yet. 
but which I will create now. So AI user data float like this, and this out value connects to the diffuse strength. The user data float name, I will just paste in here. It's a diffuse strength and it has a default value of zero. So whenever this attribute is not on the shape, it will take the default value. But because I have this attribute now in every shape, it will use the value which is stored onto the shape node, which is also zero. Um, so if I render now, let's just save before we start. On render, they should all render black because they don't have this diffuse strength. So first let's change the diffuse color to be something very um, apparent. If I just can grab this and just let's just add a red color. And now on one soldier, let's just change the value. If I can find it, is it in here? No. So let's just change one val one the value of one soldier to one and start the render. And you can see that one soldier is now being rendered red because it has a value of one. So what I want to do now is create a random value for each soldier, let's say between 0 0.5 and one. And to do so, I go back over to the script editor and I will, uh, I still have my loop. So I create just another full loop. And then for each soldier, so I want to change a value. So I would say soldier and the attribute is um, this one here, M2 I constant diffuse strength, which I copy and paste. And I will just set this value and now a random value. So to first you need to create or import the library called random import random and run this control enter and then you what you can do is directly in here create random dot uniform uniform open brackets and close and then in the range between 0 0.5 and 1 1 1.0 doesn't matter so and if I run this again each shape should get a random value in this range. And we can see this is 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.6, and they all have a random value. And if I render now, so I just had a Maya crash. Um, anyways, I just restarted Maya and I created an AOV uh, using AOVs and then AL Surfer's diffuse color AOV. And if you check the diffuse color, you can actually see that there is a random value for each different soldier. It might not be too apparent though. So um, also because I crashed, my scripts are not there. So I will just pause the video and write them quickly. Right, so I just have the code back in. So, and now I just changed the value from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. And let's just uh, run this again to see if we get a, a bigger difference now. So each um, value is now ranging from uh, 0 0.1 to, point, uh, to 1. And let's just see what we get now. <clears throat> and you can see we get a bigger difference now. Let's see if it's more apparent now. Yeah, now you can see we get some soldiers which are not so bright and one which are really bright. So that's one thing we want to control. And the next thing is we want first to change the color to be uh, green soldiers or like this navy green. And Let's change this to be a green desaturated color. Something like this. And let's increase the roughness to something like this. So now you can see you get the randomization already. And the next thing I want to do is I want to change the um, reflectivity. And what reflectivity does, it changes the object's material. So if I change this to be metallic and I have a value of zero, we have almost the same result as having a dielectric. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I want to do now is I want to create some soldiers which are chrome and some which are gold, for instance. Um, gold is a value of like or orange where is it called? Something like this. And you can do this also using those random values. And that's the same thing. The same principle applies. I just, instead of creating one float value, I want to create three float values. So I prepared this already. So the first thing is you want to create a constant uh, of float three. 
And if you don't want to do this via code, you can always select your shape node and make sure it's selected and go to add attributes and then enter your M2A constant in here and then choose the type you want. For this, what we're doing now, I will choose vector, but I will do this prog programmatically. So I still have my loop with all the soldiers in here. And now um, I will loop, I just copy this first for soldier. And then I say soldier dot select. They need to be selected to these attributes to be added. And let's just run this. And now each soldier has another attribute called um, reflectivity. And for this to work, again, I create an AI, or this time an AI user data color. User data color. This one goes into my um, reflectivity, like so. <clears throat> and the color name, oh, sorry about that. And the reflectivity, Reflectivity. 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 Oh, there it is. You see, I can't spell. I hope this is correct. If not, I'll rather just copy the name from here to make sure they are the same. <coughs> right, so the default color is black. And the, the default value is also black. So it should look the same. Anyway, so let's just start the render. And it does it did not change at all. So if I go to a soldier now, and let's say I want the first soldier to have a gold color, I will go to these values, and I'm not sure what the gold value RGB value is, but I guess it's more red and more orange. So let's just see if I do something like this. It's a pretty dark value. That's more. Anyways, I don't know what it will look like. Render, let's see. Oh, it's not really gold. It's more, whatever, copper maybe. Um, but you can see now I have different types of materials now. I've got a me metallic one and I still have my dielectric one. And this is done with one shader and you can imagine the possibilities or the control you have. You can actually create maps. You can grade, go to Maori, paint your maps. Um, let's say you have a car and you have aluminum um, wheels or um, rims and you paint the reflectivity only for the rims to be like a brighter white or brighter gray value for aluminum and then for the rubber tires you have no reflectivity which is then a dielectric so the power is you have one shader and you can can control everything with one shader and for render times this is really important even for production renders um, this saves so much time to have one shader to control everything. Um, yeah, and obviously you can. I could now create another primva for the for the roughness. So I, this could be um, the metal could be more shiny, no roughness values, or all these kinds of things. You have all the power to do whatever you need to do in one shader. And you guys asked me what production practices. Um, are used today and this is definitely one of them to to save render times to be the most efficient possible obviously you need to be a bit of the on the technical side but it it does not matter it, it just helps you you can do the manual work to add these attributes to each value separately um, but still it it's just so much better and i don't know more efficient and I hope you do understand the power of this and try to incorporate this in your workflows just to create better renders, faster renders, more control over your images. And in a tutorial next year, I will create something similar, which is I will be going more into texturing side of things to, to illustrate the example I just explained about the car tire. And I will do a tutorial about this, but please um, try to try to, to do it yourself and see what you can do with this flexibility in your shading networks. So thank you guys for watching and leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment, ask some questions, maybe you've got other questions, new tutorial ideas. I'm open for most of things so um, let's keep in touch and thank you guys. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. Cheers.